Hello, I'm Gary Newman, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'm so excited to be sitting here with a Gary Newman today. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? Uh, good, actually. Well, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. Oh, it's good. I just, I've just got up. Okay. And it's been, I, I don't know, f 13 or 14 shows in a row. Um, so yeah, getting, now the tour legs just kicking in. You just, tall, all you want yeah. to do is nap. Getting tired now, but, <laughs> no, but apart from that, great. Yeah. Well, aside from being tired, it is an exciting time because Savage is officially out. So congratulations on that latest uh, record release. Thank you. How's it feel now that you finally have some new music to share with everybody? Uh, well, it's it's um, it's very cool actually. You know, it's it's the the last album was 2013. Um, we we toured that extensively, so the the cycle of that was quite a long one, but then um. When I start, I started Savage in 2015, and for the first year or so, if I'm truthful, I couldn't really get into it. Get in, into it. There was stuff. My mum died. There was horrible stuff happened, and it just, you know, it sort of saps your enthusiasm slightly to really want to get lost in that sort of thing. But then it, it started to pick up, and, and then it got really exciting. So you know, for the last sort of six to nine months of it, it was very fast and I started to work with Aid Fenton again who produced my last few and he um, he knows how to push me along <laughs> yeah so that was good it was great and and it all coincided with the you know the US election was happening and, and, and I'd, I'd moved to America yeah there's a lot to take from there was a whole lot of stuff going on that was just shocking <laughs> <laughs> for one of a better expression uh, and very useful you know the album that is about a, a global warming apocalyptic future um, all very science, very science fiction when I started it, but then because of what Trump was saying about global warming, it, it's, it started to feel a lot more relevant. So it became important to pompous thing, but but to me it, it started to feel a lot more important. It had an everyday relevance because of Trump that it didn't have before, and that made it more exciting, not in, in an entirely positive way, but it made it more <laughs> exciting just to say. Well, I'd have to say that this is probably one of the most electronic records you've released in albums, and I absolutely yeah. love that, especially the, how electro you go on My Name is Rune. So yeah. I was wondering, for the idea of that song, how did that come about, and just to have not just your name as Rune, but all these other really dark topics and names? Well, because of the subject, because it's um, it, it's actually started as a book. I mean, I've been trying to write a novel for, for quite some time about this you know, um, apocalyptic future. Well, you know, the world is largely desert, water is a currency, blah, blah, blah. And so the album is actually a series of snapshots of what, not really what the world would be like then, although that's a part of it, but what happens to people when they're forced to live and survive in, in an environment like that and how difficult it would be. Um, but the electronic thing's interesting because Billboard threw it out of the chart. I know, it wasn't even on it. No, it? it's not it electronic shot, enough, dude. apparently. That's insane. I, well, I thought so. I was... Um, I was surprised. You know, if if it was a, a dance chart, then I would understand because you know, it's not a dance. It dance record, but it, it's not. It's a dance electronic. You're one of the chart. pioneers of electronic music right here too, and you didn't make that. I that know. completely shocked me when I saw. With it. my most electronic album I've ever made, mm -hmm. you know, the the one they talk about as being this pioneering, you know, album that albums that kind of kickstarted the whole genre in a way. Things like Replicas and Pressure Principle from way back when. You, you know, Savage is far more electronic than they are. And yet it's not electronic enough so anymore. Weird. That is just, but, and it was it was really disappointing because it was actually it went in at number one on that. You know, even beat yeah. Calvin Harris, which I never thought would happen. Um, and then not only got demoted for number one, but got kicked out of the chart altogether. <laughs> <laughs> it, really? Did you send I something? can't be in an electronic. Say, chart. Did you send something their way or kind of try to voice it? Like, uh, how is this not? Well, they actually kept it away from me. Uh, that the record company and my wife Gemma were were very involved in fighting against it and there were you know emails backwards and forwards and um but it didn't last long event you know very very soon billboard essentially said um made my decision one man as well made my decision don't talk to me anymore about it that's okay. that's it and they wouldn't entertain you know we sent them charts of how many parts were electronic and how many were organic and it was like 85 90 percent all computer driven software and and the organic stuff was me singing and a bit of guitar that was it. They wouldn't entertain any of it. No, it doesn't sound electronic. <laughs> How is it supposed to sound no then? Well, if it makes you feel any better, I feel like everybody else, aside from them, feels as an electronic record. <laughs> oh, so well, thank you. You're thank very you. welcome. But yeah, it was just, it was bizarre, you know, it's, and it sort of, it makes a mockery of the, 
of the chart, really, which is, is a shame, yeah. Well, Savage serves as your 18th solo record, and I love how you're still able to keep things so fresh and unique on your albums, especially throwing in, putting it back to the desert you mentioned earlier, those Middle Eastern vibes. So has yeah. that instrumentation been something you've always been a fan of, or why did you decide to pick up on that? I, I have always been a fan of it. Um, so, you know, there's a chance it would have been there anyway, but, but within the context of the story that the album is taken from, um, I was trying to find a way of, of expressing the idea that Eastern and Western cultures have effectively merged. Because of what's happened to the world and the difficulties of simply surviving, there is no longer any time, no time for religion actually, religion's gone. Eastern and Western differences have, have evaporated because of a, a much stronger need simply to survive from one day to the next. So it was trying to find a way musically of expressing that. And so bringing in Middle Eastern melodies and instrumentation into a Western album, I thought was a, a, a cool way of doing it musically, and it all makes sense. The, the sleeve, you know, the very, the, the font, for example, looks Arabic. Yeah, so it might mean, but it's the, this yeah. is Farsi, but uh, uh, the but the actual language is English. So again, it's that merging of the two, and the look of the sleeve. You know, I'm, I'm of course I'm standing there looking <laughs> the way I look, yeah. and I wanted to give it a, a, a vaguely military feel without it looking like weapons and you know straps and all that sort of stuff. I wanted it to have a, a military look to it to try to give some sort of indication as it would be a very very violent sort of world you know and so at the, all of it you know the musical side of it the sleeve the, the lyric obviously it's all trying to find ways of expressing that this this idea of, you know that the, the book looks at and what I've got to do now when all this touring is finished, is actually finished the book. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on it forever. It's really embarrassing. Well, when I did the last album in 2013, I was talking about it then. Same book. Oh, wow. Still not finished. Is it just that the music keeps coming in? Like the ideas for new songs <clears> and you kind of have to put on the back burner? It is a bit that, yeah. It is a bit. It's something that I, I, I've I, never really sat down and said, right, this is, I'm just going to do that. So it's something I just keep going day here, mm. day there. And, and that's, you can't write a book like that yeah not that I know much about it I've never written a book but I would imagine <laughs> you really got to you got to apply yourself to it and kind of lose yourself in the world that you're trying to create and it's not just making music but you know I, I tour constantly I mean I'm always if I'm not doing new album I'm doing other things and I've got children who I really love and, and I I love being with children and that's that's probably the biggest distraction of all you know I I I don't want to miss, from the moment they were born, I've not wanted to miss a moment of it. Yes, I was there for every, I cut the cord when they came out. I did, um, I've been there for everything, every first step, every laugh, every first thing that ever happened, and everything from then on. <laughs> I've been there for all of it, and, I, and I, it's my whole life, the children. And, um, and so touring is, I love touring as well, but it is difficult, you know, because you're away from them. Of course. Uh, and so when I'm not touring and I go back home, Rather than sitting down thinking, I should do that book now. You want to spend time with them? I'm going to head off to Disneyland with the kids and just, you know, but too much. Too much, really. But, you know, it's that's the most important thing in my life. You're not taking the record out on the road, but I saw before crossing the border into Canada, you actually had Purchase singing on My Name Is Your yeah. Live. So that yeah. must have just been so special for you, especially hearing you talk about your kids, just having yeah. her on stage with you. It is lovely, actually. Uh, but I, I want to... I want to make it clear she's not there because I'm just trying to shoehorn my daughter onto a record. <laughs> she actually can sing. Oh, she's a great singer. Yeah, uh, I didn't know it was her when I first heard the song. Yeah, no, she's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And um, it was actually a, a, an accident that she was there in the first place. She, I'd, I've been working on that song, uh, the My Name Is Ruin song, uh, for a while, and, and I had these ideas for what these vocal things were supposed to do. They you know it had a dynamic. The song lift it in between the verses, and then it would drop back down to the verse again, and then the chorus would come in bigger. And all, all these sort of dynamic things that I had for it, and I tried it with my voice, and it just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I couldn't reach a high note for the octave, which is embarrassing. Um, I'd done it in the wrong key, uh, and the Arabian part that's in the song, I, I, again with my voice, it just not now. It sort of rumbles long, sort of quite low. And I, it just didn't sound right. And she came home from school. It's as simple as that. And poked her head around the door and just said, you know, hello, Dad. And I'm home. And I thought, ah. I have an idea. <laughs> Light bulb. Why are you here? Uh, <laughs> so in she came. And she she was just amazing. And she she nailed three completely separate parts straight away. And she never even heard the song. Just learnt these parts. And the Arabian one's quite tricky. I mean, bang, 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 bang. And 
and she multi-tracked everything perfect and it just made the song it was brilliant and then we went out to do the video for it because they the record company chose it as a single did the video for it out in the desert and again i thought you know this might be a bit much for her she, you know, surrounded by people, being directed, and it, she might crumble a bit with that. Didn't at all. She just, but she's nervous. She's not cocky or you know precocious at all. She's really, she's nervous, but she overcomes it. And she, and, and I think that was a strength of character that I was really proud of more than anything, really. And then with the shows, um, the first show she did ever was in uh, was in Liverpool in Britain. Three thousand two hundred people. And these no big, big deal. Big <laughs> And she was so nervous, and she, but she just come out and she did it. But she was she was like this actually, sort of fairly still, and had her words written in front of us. She can't remember the word, <laughs> <laughs> like me. Uh, but since then, she must have done. I'm not sure now, fifteen, maybe more shows, and she's got more and more confident. I love that. Yeah, we did one in London. We did uh, we did a show in Brixton that we were filming, and that was quite a big one. That's five thousand, whatever it was. It was a big place, and um, and she was sitting next to my dad. And I said to my, my dad afterwards, I said, was she, was she all right? He said, yeah, couldn't, didn't seem to care at all. She just popped up and decided to do it, went off and did it, came back, sat down, and carried on talking. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah so she's, I think if she wants to do it as a career, then, then she, she could. easily could. Yeah. But she's in, into so many different things. <laughs> I love finding out that you actually have a 20 foot bronze dragon in the front of your garden uh, of your house. Yeah. Uh, was that something that came with the house or was that something that you were just like, no, I came need with to it. get this? It's, uh, we, we love um, old, my, I, I collect swords, for example. Um, and we have a fascination for dragons. I've got loads of books all about dragons. My kids love my dragons. And there is a style, we, the, the old English castle kind of look is a style that we've loved all our lives. And we've often talked about, wouldn't it be great when we're older, if we could actually afford to you know, buy a little castle somewhere, you know, never, never thought it would happen, but you know, you, you dream about these things. And so we start, we're trying to buy a house in uh, Los Angeles when we were gonna move there. And I, I'd been, I've been writing in, you know, sensible figures as to what you could afford on Zillow and all those online sites. And then Gemma, got, my wife, got involved in it and just throw in stupid figures. <laughs> <laughs> of, we know she had a row about that. I can't afford that. Uh-huh. Yeah, we could do that. What are you gonna, doing? Then you're going to see something that you love and everything we can afford is going to look rubbish and now it's going to be disappointing. <laughs> and, She's like, I got it. <laughs> and so, uh, she, so oh, all right then. Sure enough, this house can look like a castle with a bronze dragon it's in the front garden. Yeah. Amazing, beautiful thing, but too mu- way too much money. So um, she said, well, let's just have a look at it. Uh, all right, but I'm not going in. We just park out front and look at it. I mean, it's just going to be disappointing because it'll look lovely and you can't have it. So we did. And as we arrived there, so some people getting out of a car, it came over to us and she'd sneakily arranged a viewing for it <laughs> without telling me. So I said to her, all right, because I'm, tra- I'm trapped now, we go in. But when we get there, we can't afford it. So, you know, be cool. Just sort of find everything that's wrong with it. <laughs> and we're putting a silly offer, <laughs> yeah, we keep moaning about things. And, and she did the opposite. The man opened the door and she just screamed, because it is, it is lovely. <laughs> you know, and she just d- ran off. <laughs> and she's gone for about 10, 15 minutes. I didn't see her. Wow. All I could hear was his screaming. So she, every, went, every room opens. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, look at this. Oh, God. You know, so we put in the silly offer and they said no. And to cut a very long story short, that went on for about a year. Really? Yeah, but eventually we did get it. They got the people that were trying to buy it kept messing them about, and you know, buyer after buyer would let them down. So by the time they it came Finally back to us the again, proper price. Yeah, they, they accepted us to the offer. <laughs> <laughs> they were so fed up with trying to sell it. So yeah, so we got this amazing. It's got secret staircases, and really? yeah, you press a part of the wall and it opens up. And there's a staircase. Oh, the girls must love that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, one of the girls, there's a trap door in her closet. You go into a closet and this little thing, you open it up and it goes in between floors and it's all lit up, and, but only kids can get in it. Wow. It's amazing. That it's is really, so cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, really lucky to get it. Oh. Well, let's jump things up. I do want to bring it back to the fans. Is there anything you would like to say to all of those who will be viewing? Just any parting words? Oh, <clears throat> so much actually. When, you know, this album, has done better than any one I've had for a very long time. In, in Britain, it got to n- number two, and it was just a, an amazing turnaround of, of, because it got really bad for a while, you know. I, was, I towards the end of the 80s, early 90s, especially, actually, I, I was, I was pretty much dead and buried, you know. I, nothing was selling, and 
I, I literally couldn't give tickets away because we tried <laughs> giving them to people in the street who didn't want them. <laughs> so it got pretty bad. And uh, uh, the good thing about that is it, it, you, you, you kind of give up all commercial um, aspirations and you just go back to doing it for the love of doing it again. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just write songs passion. that you love. But the thing is, they enough of them stayed with me even during that low bit that it gave me something you know a little acorn to, to try to grow back and and it's been a very long time but it is getting there now you know the album's done amazingly well this tour has has been the, the best um north american tour i've done for a very very long time and it's and you, you're just really grateful you know for you know, the people that were still there the people that are getting into it now I and mean, i'm grateful for that it's just I, I don't know. I think you have to be you, you have to have been around for a long time, and you certainly had to have had some serious ups and downs within that to really appreciate what it means to to have people that were, that were stayed with you for a long time, and to see people coming in. I, I, I think w w when success comes early on, you, you kind of just accept it too easily, and you just you know, like it's it, nothing. Not nothing, but not as much as it should, should be. be. Okay. You know, and you don't appreciate what's happened as much. I don't think you appreciate the people that have given it to you, which is the fans, uh, enough. Um, uh, and, and so it 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 takes a while to to really grasp what it all means and how important it is and how, in a sense, how little of it is down to you. <laughs> you, you, you know, you you write the songs, but I mean, there are thousands of people writing songs. You um, I I don't know, but you do you you change and you, for, it, for me it happened quite a long time ago actually. Man, I, when I've been with my wife now twenty five years, uh, and I remember when we were first together. Even back then, I was doing things with the fan club. We would have monthly competitions where fans could come out with me. This is in England mainly, um, and we do cool, you know, go kart racing or paintballing. So even way back then, I'd already realized how important it was and was trying to find ways of of building closer relationships so it wasn't just sort of you know rock star on stage of and that sort of thing to, to and, I've, and ever since then um, we, we've worked on ways of, of trying to do that you know we started doing meet and greets years ago <clears throat> it was normal for me I, w I would do shows this is when i was younger and i would wait out by the bus at the end of the show and i could you know so you've done your gig and then I'll be outside I'll stand at the front of the bus and then we'd, I'll be out there for a couple of hours just signing anything for anybody that wanted to be there and then it got there was a couple of things happened I, I nearly got beaten up once um, not by fans but people walking past and, and it made it feel a bit dangerous so I stopped doing that so we changed that to meet and greet and also I'm getting old I can't stand out in the cold for two hours after a gig Hard um, to keep the desert vibes, right? Coming to cold, yes, cold now. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> that was tricky. <laughs> it's tricky getting a desert vibe in Canada in the winter. But we've always tried to, I've always tried to, um, since the early years when I did take it for granted, to be fair, I, I've tried to find ways of building close relationships with them. So we have fans come to rehearsals now. Um, every rehearsal day we have, we have fans coming to see that. The pledge campaign for the album it's, it's not about funding because I've got my own studio. I, I, I don't need funding. It was a way of trying to involve them in something that they would never normally get to see. So I did something like 60 odd updates, vi video updates of making the album so they could see from the first note that you write how that develops through through the whole production process, lyrics and everything right up to the sleeve actually. Um, I, I, I felt that if if a fan could be more involved in the the making of the record, if they can understand all the thoughts and the ups and downs that, that go into making a record, when they actually hear it, it would be a, a more complete experience than just hearing something cold for the first time. So it, it's, there are ways that I, I'm, I recognise the importance of fans and, and how much it means to me, and, and I am constantly trying to find ways of involving them in it more. Not so that I'm going to be everybody's best friend, I'm, not, I don't mean it in that way, but but just try to involve them in in a way that gives them more than just going to a gig, seeing a show, and going home again, mm -hmm. or listening to a record and That's liking it or not liking it and putting it away again. You know, to have a slightly better connection than that. That was incredibly play. I love how humble you are. 
as a fan myself, it's amazing just sitting here with you and hearing all the stories. So thank oh, you for really? taking the time. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And oh. remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See ya.